everyone, and welcome back to another podcast episode. My name is Alicia Gogan, the host of the Glow Up Secrets podcast, where I help you expand your mind and become more self-aware so that you can glow up into the best version of yourself. Okay, guys, it is a new season, and I'm excited for this season. And what I'm really calling this new season, other than fall, shout out to all the people actually, though, who I believe it's the Southern Hemisphere or whatever. All of my Australian girlies or guys who are watching this because technically you guys are going into summer, which still like blows my mind when I hear about that. Anyways, we're going to the fall time, but I want to call this the next chapter. And with that said, I want to give you guys some tips and maybe some advice when it comes to transitioning yourself mentally and physically into a new season. I think this episode could be helpful for those who are struggling with motivation or inspiration when it comes to transitioning from summer to fall, but also just to give you guys a reminder to really do your best to flow with the season of life. I feel like a lot of us can get into a perfectionist mindset and or a fixing energy and or a one track way of trying to live our lives and sometimes we push up against nature we push up against what's happening in our current lives and we resist it a lot we struggle with it a lot and i find the reason why sometimes there is so much unhappiness or lack of motivation when it comes to moving into fall and winter seasons is this forgetting of the fact that We are transitioning and it's okay to transition. And how can we prepare ourselves mentally and physically for this transition instead of trying to hold on to patterns and habits and ways of life that might serve us in one chapter of our lives, but might not serve us in another. And during my later half of my 20s, I have really fallen into understanding that life is cyclical. I cycle sync. I understand there's just no point on trying to do the same thing every single day for the rest of my life because the seasons are changing or my mood is changing, things like that. So I really love the fact that we are cyclical human beings in general and we have different seasons. Some of us, I know not everyone has like a fall and a winter and this, that, but I think naturally there is this transition. And so I'm always reflecting and thinking about how can I really ease into the new season versus just like one day waking up and it's fall or one day waking up and it's winter. And of course that kind of happens regardless, but I feel like a lot of the times when we do kind of wake up and we realize we're unhappy is because we didn't take that time to really slowly ease into something in general. So let's first talk about mental transitions. I think the best way to start a healthy transition into a new season is sitting down, having a dedicated day to really think about some of the goals and the vision that you hold for yourself for the next few months to come, or even just like the fall season. It completely depends. Some people like to plan their years and quarters or month to month or or even like a year, whatever. I just think having a maybe not even clean slate because maybe you have goals that you still want to build on or work on, but really sitting down and getting clear with how it is that you want to live out your life when it comes to your career, when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to your friendships, all the areas of your life. How do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What are the things that you want to be working on? One, because it just gives you good energy, right? And you get inspired again and you get into this new vibe. But I think this really helps with your mood and just being happy with life because it can be depressing sometimes moving from the fun summer sunny like chaotic brat summer maybe or like healing girl summer whatever summer you had from this slower paced energy that we're moving into. I think a great way to do this, and this is what I always do, and I'm going to show you guys my mood board, is to create a mood board or a vision board. I'll probably just call it vision board because that's basically what it is. And also having some sort of like planning situation that you have. I like to use Notion when it comes to content goals, when it comes to career plan and workouts, like all of the things that involve my life essentially, where I can sit down and think about the goals that I want to hit and like kind of what I'm projecting to do and be in the next fall season. So I just recently made my 
fall mood board. I will leave a link to the template down below on Canva and you can make your own. You'll just have to take out the photos and you can add your own in. You can also follow me on Pinterest because I create a lot of Pinterest boards for aesthetic vibes and stuff. I am very much so an aesthetic visual girl. So I really like to think about my goals and set intentions from this place of like a mood board or a vision where I can see imagery. And on my vision boards, I like to encompass the aesthetics, yes, of like how I want the fall, winter, but mainly it's fall because we'll do a winter one too. But fall to kind of look and feel whether that be my outfits or where I'm going to be moving or when I mean moving I just mean like places I'm going to be moving at whether it's cafes or different dinner spots or um, what I want to do with my friends things like that but also it does encompass some of my goals so for mine and for those who are watching on audio Maybe you want to go to YouTube today and just see how my mood board looks. Or you might be following me on Instagram, which if you haven't, you can follow me on Instagram, Alicia Gogan. So in this chapter of my life, I'm getting really clear with my career plan. I have always kind of been clear with that when it comes to like what I want to do with the podcast and what I want to do with one-on-one -on -one clients and the education that I want to have and all of those things. And I have been working on them. But I think naturally this season of life, I tend to like to study more and do more certifications and just like expand my knowledge on things. So I really, not only did I get clear with my career plan for honestly, like the next five years by going into Notion and making a template and just like writing out all the certifications and what I envision myself doing for my career. But on my mood board, I have a photo of a girl writing, which also leads into like mental health as well. Lots of journaling I love to do. And there's a girl who is like looking at books on a bookshelf. I don't know. I just think those just represent studying, knowledge, wisdom, working hard on something, focusing on your career. I love that. Another thing that I want to focus on is my relationships and that is friendships and romantic. And so there's, I think there's two on here. Well, yeah, two where one is like a dinner with like a city view and that's basically dates that could be with friends, but also romantic. And if you guys watched my vlog channel, which that video didn't get that many views, so probably not a lot of you guys um, saw it. But if you did watch the Get Ready With Me, then you will know we are back in the dating scene. There's also a photo. It kind of looks like Yorkville in Toronto. If you guys have never been to Toronto and you want to come to Toronto, definitely stop around Yorkville because it's beautiful. It is like hella expensive, like where the Richies live, but it's beautiful. And um, I like to spend some time there sometimes, not all the time because like it's expensive, but just going to those cool aesthetic places. It doesn't even have to be Yorkville, but just um, like Ossington or Kensington Market, like any places really where it's just like beautiful. You can see the fall leaves, it's scenery, all of those things with my friends. So that's why I like to have that. And it's just like a fall aesthetic, of course. There's a girl holding coffee with like nice boots and and I really like that fashion sense. And also something with a girl who's like walking in a beautiful, nice, like aesthetic outfit with her little coffee. Like she is on her shit. She's going somewhere. She has something to do type of energy. And that's how I usually am during the fall time. There is a girl at the gym. Now, I don't usually like to put other women's bodies on my vision board. I did like darken the photo a little bit, but Honestly, I just felt like that photo fit the vibe and that kind of actually looks like my gym and I really want that set, honestly. So spending more time and there's another photo where it's like um, a yoga mat with lights and stuff, really just spending more time moving and we will talk about movement. There is a makeup bag because like I just want to do more like get ready with me when it comes to vlogs, but also just romanticizing like getting ready and being a girl or a woman. I should say both. Sometimes we're a girl, sometimes we're a woman. Just depends on the day. Okay. But I have a new vanity in my podcast studio. So like, I'm just really trying to enjoy that and like be in the present, which I will talk about. And there's a photo of like an at home. There's like cookies and I think there's like ice cream on there, but it really just like signals to me just really slowing down into my night routine and cooking for myself and enjoying my space. There's another video that I posted on my main channel when it comes to creating my space for fall time and I made it really cozy. I got a new table, a dining table, which has made me so much more productive because I feel like I actually have a place to sit and work and eat. And I have like the new vanity makeup area as well. So I feel like my house is really a home home and it motivates me to like want to do more of my morning routines and more of my night routines, things like that. So 
just thinking about the vibe you want to be in, the identity that you want to hold, the things that you want to do. It could be hobbies. It could be something to do with finances or career, relationships, your health, your beauty, anything. Just really reinvent yourself. Like this is a perfect time to do that. And then add those photos onto a vision board, put it on your desktop, put it on your phone screen and just get ready to set the vibes. Also, maybe even changing your music playlist or getting a new book. Sometimes I like to do those things to kind of signal like a new era. I am currently making new Spotify playlists, so I will link them when they are ready. They're not ready yet, but I am definitely getting more music as well. Now, another thing when it comes to mental transition, I think it's really important to practice gratitude and presence. I think sometimes we can get really caught up in the next thing right? Especially when it comes to fall, I feel like fall goes really quickly and then it's like Christmas and then New Year's and then I got to glow up before summer. Like everything happens very quickly, but in my life, I'm really just trying to be present. Why? (sighs) Many reasons. One, for your nervous system. Okay. Let's remind ourselves again that our nervous systems are calling us to slow it down and this is a great time to heal your nervous system to heal yourself in the most natural way which is moving with the season of life things slow down the sun sets earlier there's darker nights there's slower nights there's nights where you probably will get more sleep there are colder days which means to come inward and introspect these are all natural signals that you can take from nature, from the universe, that will heal you naturally. Sometimes we look for the supplement or the diet or the person or the thing to fix our issues or heal our traumas or what what, uh, new journal prompt can I do and this, that, those are all beautiful things. But most of the time when it comes to trauma, when it comes to unhealed this, that, toxic habits, sabotage, all of that kind of stuff, there's always a nervous system dysregulation kind of um, connection with that and how you can really work on no longer operating from this fight or flight, which makes you sabotage, which makes you act out of ways you don't want to be anxious, be depressed. All of those things is to move with nature, is to move with the season of life. So I find when it comes to my journal practice, which is what I love to do in the mornings, I really, especially like right now, I'm really spending time being so hyper aware of the things that I do have and being grateful for them and just basking in them. Why? Like I said, yes, because it helps with your nervous system. But in general, it's like, why are we not, you know? And I feel like we we forget this a lot, especially the ones who are into self-development. Same with me. I forget all the time. The other day I had this like huge epiphany in bed. I was like, you so don't remember sometimes how impactful you can be and your work is and your podcast is and all the things that you've done and you need to start because it's actually insane like sometimes I will recognize other people's successes and it's not even from this place of like being jealous or thinking that I'm not doing good enough but I just always can acknowledge other people for being so successful like I was doing this the other day I was thinking about somebody in my life and I'm like wow like He's so successful and da, 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 and this, that. And I'm sitting here like, you have had so many, thousands of people, thousands of you guys individually reach out to me and say, your podcast changed my life. It's helping me get through the days. It's helping me with my depression. It's helping me learn something new, like genuinely. And you don't even acknowledge that in terms of like, I don't really sit there and reflect on that a lot and see how like, wow, it's really impactful. And I need to start doing that more. Even when it comes to my book, like I'm so used to just not and just kind of working and doing the things that I know that I'm good at. And that's great. But it's like, you do have to be grateful and you do have to acknowledge the things that you have accomplished. And even outside of the things that I've accomplished when it comes to like my podcast and this, that in general, all of the healing that I've done, all of the lessons that I've learned from the past years, same with you guys, you guys have come this far. Okay. I don't care if you're pissed off about something that hasn't worked out yet, or you haven't hit a goal. You're here today. So that means you should be grateful for that. You should be proud of yourself for going through the things that you have gone through and thinking about it from a manifestation standpoint. How is it that you think that you're really going to continue to bring more abundance in your life if you can't even acknowledge what you do have? 
and even if you do bring more abundance in your life, you're never even going to be resting in it because you're always going to be on to the next thing because you're in the fight or flight. You're in the, I'm not grateful. You're in the, I can't acknowledge anything. You have to practice. And how you do that is sometimes doing a journal practice of being grateful for the things that you do have and sending letters to yourself and being proud of yourself. You should really do that in this season of your life. The third thing can maybe be for some people and maybe not. It depends on your resources and if you have money to do that, but maybe considering if you've never been to therapy, going to therapy or going back to therapy or even maybe changing therapists or changing something about what you are focusing on in therapy or with a coach. I also do one-on-one coaching, which is different than therapy. It's very future focused, but we do a lot of like feminine embodiment work. So if you're interested in working with me, you can have all the information down below, but you can do that. Or you could even maybe invest some money into a new course or finding free resources or just simply getting a book and learning something new about yourself and like really picking something that you want to, you know, you want to work on. Like for me in my life right now, the, the big piece that I'm working on is interpersonal relationships. I have a lot of relational trauma. I mean, I feel like most people do that watch the episodes and relate to anything when it comes to um, anxious attachment, disorganized attachment, um, uh, anxious behaviors really with people or not backing yourself, I find, or comparing and all that kind of stuff. A lot of that can stem from relational trauma, not always, but that is my issue. I have lived a life where I've had to take care of myself from a young age and I've had to rely on only myself. And unfortunately that has created a lot of trust issues. That's created a lot of not feeling safe in a relationship to be able to express myself myself because I never learned how to do that. And I've learned a lot of things and I've come a lot of ways and I've healed a lot of like anxious attached parts of me and, and avoidant parts of me and this, that I am a disorganized attachment style, by the way. Um, but I, I tend to create content based off of the things that I have learned on both sides. So that's why I have some videos sometimes where I talk about anxious attachment. I don't think I've really talked about avoidant, but I've talked about it when it comes to friendships. Anyways, I want to focus on that when it comes to therapy. So maybe thinking about something that keeps continuously coming up for you. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is physical transition. So this pertains to health. So movement, because we're not going to get that many nice days to come in Toronto as it gets cooler, I want to spend as much time outside I have been really focusing on going back out in nature a lot more than I have. I feel like this summer I didn't do that good when it comes to hot girl walks. Like I feel like I did like minimum, seriously minimum to a day last summer and even kind of in the winter time. But now it's like a minimum one day. Like I'll always walk, but I just feel like I haven't been doing that much. So I am really getting the most out of my days. So spending time in the morning, getting sunlight, getting a lot of steps in. I have been counting my steps kind of, not really counting. My phone counts my steps and I like to look at it at the end of the day. That's what I mean. So I'm kind of like thinking in my head, like, oh, did I hit my 10K steps? And if I'm only at 5,000, can I go on a second walk for the day? I'm really trying to spend a lot more time out in nature. But in general, I'm just making it a habit of making sure that I am moving consistently to a point where it's not like the easiest thing in the world, but it is kind of like a workout because we should really prime ourselves for the winter time because we should be moving, yes, in the winter time, but I feel like it's just always harder to get back into the gym or to get on your daily walks when you took a long time off, let's say you took a long time off and you're not motivated, but you just kind of like know you need to or you want to, this, that. So I just find focusing on building up your routine when it comes to movement, whatever that looks like. Maybe you're doing yoga, maybe you're doing spin, maybe you're just doing walks for now, but just like really being intentional with movement. And I also think, especially when it comes to like uh, going outside a lot, you're again, you're moving with nature. You're signaling to your body. All right, we're going to come inwards. It's introspection time. We are slowing it down. We are healing our nervous systems. We are being grateful for what we have. All of those things can really help you heal and transform and build capacity for you to be able to hit those big goals that you really want in your life. Next thing is diet. So I really like to eat seasonally, but it's not the way maybe you think when I say that. I feel like the standard way to eat when it comes to eating seasonally is like eating fruits and vegetables that are in season. And although yes, that's a great way to like eat seasonally, but 
honestly, your body has a lot of wisdom. Even if you don't have like the best relationship with food or you're still struggling with that, your body has a lot of wisdom and you will find your body craving more foods than others, like different types of foods than others. And so I like to really listen to my body when it comes to these seasonal transitions and make foods that will support me. So I'll give you a few examples. The other day I went to acupuncture and sometimes I'll get a smoothie bowl. I try not to get them too much because it's such a cold food. It's not the best for your digestion if you have digestive issues. And I always just get really, really cold, but they taste so good. And I was craving one when I was walking there. And then I got up from my like acupuncturist table and I was thinking still like I'm craving the smoothie bowl, this, that. But as soon as I got outside, it was cool. Like it, like the air was just, it was almost like, do I even walk home? I was, I ended up walking home, but I just knew like the wisdom of my body as soon as I got out was like, I'm just going to, it's going to taste good for three seconds, but I'm going to be so cold and so sluggish. And like, I'm going to be very cold that like, it's almost like my body was saying this to, to my mind in a way. And it was like, no, please, no, please, no. And I was fighting myself for a second because I had kind of already decided that that's kind of what I wanted to do. And Obviously, I kind of had that craving, but I was like, we are listening to our bodies, okay, this season, Alicia. We are listening to our body, and your body knows, and your body doesn't want a damn smoothie bowl. And you can have the smoothie bowl on another day, but it ain't going to be today. So I ended up going to get a hot matcha, which was perfect, like so warming and soothing. And I got this like turkey BLT on like a croissant, and it was like warm. So that really... It's what my body wanted. Another thing, today, I went on a little walk in the morning and I was with somebody and we wanted to go to a coffee shop and he was like, oh, what what coffee shop do you want to go to? Or like, what's your favorite one? We had passed the one that I really wanted to go to and I was thinking about this really cute one, but I only get iced mocha at that place and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to go and they have great iced mochas, but again... I was like, as I was walking, I was like tapping into my body. Like, this is what I do. Like I listen to my body and I'm like kind of thinking, but I'm feeling into my body and I'm like, I'm making a decision. I'm like, are we going to go to this coffee shop or like the regular normal one? And I'm like, listen, it is a cool morning day. It doesn't feel like an iced mocha day, even though there was a little bit of that craving because it was so good. But I checked in with my body and I was like, you know what? I already know my body's going to love more than anything to have like a warmer latte. It's going to feel better. And we ended up going to this, well, it wasn't new, but we went to another coffee shop and they had like this new drink. It, It was unreal. So good. We both had great coffees. And then we went to the water and we sat in the sun. We were basking in the sun. I had my warm latte. It was still perfect because it wasn't too hot and my body just loved me. So really spending some time checking with your body, also educating yourself if you don't know when it comes to what foods are more seasonal and just things that might be better for your body when it comes to those cooler months. Anything that is cooked, anything that is warming to your body will probably be best. And doing your best to just not ignore what your body really wants. And I know it can be difficult, especially again, if you don't have the best relationship with food. I did not. And I talk about it in my book, The Ultimate Glow Up Guide. This addiction to candy that I used to have, but also this unhealthy relationship with food because I had an unhealthy relationship with body image. So I would suggest if you really struggle, maybe get my book. That could be a helpful resource so you can kind of feel seen and heard. I will have it linked down below. Or again, maybe getting help on that part of your life. That's maybe a great part if you find that you don't have a healthy relationship with food. But I think that there is an innate wisdom that your body holds and knows, you know, I want this soup today versus this cold raw salad, or I have been recently really craving teriyaki bowls. I've been making basmati rice with chicken broth and having grass fed ground beef. I've been having avocado in it. It is just, it's, it's just, makes sense for my body right now versus like a steak that I used to have all the time in the summertime with like a Greek salad. Doesn't mean steak is not good to have in the wintertime. That's definitely like a warming food in a way. It's also like temperature warm and it's a great source of protein, but I just know that my body's craving something else. Another thing when it comes to physical transitions would be focusing on supplements and healthcare in general. I think these are the times, if I find at least for me, that 
health issues can arise if I am not supporting myself when it comes to making sure that I'm getting all the vitamins, the nutrients, and getting all the checks that I need and like just getting everything in check because I feel like, I don't know, in the summertime, we thrive a lot. We're more social. We get more sun. We are warm a lot. We're, there's a lot of heat. There's a lot of just like energy, right? So I find, at least for me, health-wise, I'm usually pretty thriving in the summer but those slower months it's almost like my body is calling me to make sure that I am supporting it so I am taking certain supplements right now obviously you want to make sure that you're getting like blood tests done if you need that or you know getting a new doctor if you need that or getting checks do whatever you have to do obviously I can't tell you what you really need but maybe even just thinking about um, when it comes to your periods if you want to support yourself a little bit better through different supplementation I'm taking some iron right now I'm taking a probiotic I am taking uh, omega-3s I'm focusing more on taking vitamin d3 because that is huge especially as we get less and less sun now another thing that is huge which will take time But that is focusing on building your morning routine and night routine. Now, I am a huge advocate of never doing the same thing every single day because like, I don't know, it just does not work for me in my ADHD brain and my cyclical brain and my need for, I don't know, like not doing the same thing every single day so that I don't feel like I am in jail the way that I felt when I was in childhood, maybe something to do with that. I don't know. All of those things. I really spend a lot of time curating a morning routine that I'm excited for that is healthy, that works for me and a night routine, especially in the winter months, because I feel like we just have more time, right? We have more time. Not It's not that we really have more time because obviously we have the same amount of time in a day, but we have longer nights it usually feels because the sun will set so I like to have some rituals when it comes to cleaning my space and allotting some room to watch my favorite show and spending time cooking a meal because I have a lot of time at night anyways to do it because it's like what else am I going to do when the sun is not up focusing on my sleep that is very huge I especially find in the winter time and it's so healing as well for you to get adequate amount of sleep. So that's something that I'm focusing on as well, making sure that I'm getting off of my phone at a set time and going the frick to sleep. Recently, I've been finding that getting seven and a half-ish hours is like the sweet spot for me. I find when I wake up at that that sweet spot, usually um, lately it's kind of been like 6.30-ish. Ugh. I love waking up at like at the same time every day. That That is one thing that I like doing, like naturally if my body will do it that is something that I will get on, but I don't force myself. There are times where I need to sleep longer. If I'm in my luteal phase and I have a really bad mood, sometimes I'll take naps throughout the day if I need it and or I will sleep longer on my period. I will sleep longer. So it obviously depends, but just being a little bit more intentional with these routines because they are supportive for ourselves. They're supportive for our nervous systems. They're supportive for our mental health. And listen, Fall, winter time, after we get the high of what fall is and the high of what like Christmas and holiday season is, it usually becomes a dread. So if we can combat that dread by kind of being excited about our morning routines, having a slow morning routine where we're taking our supplements and we're having a nourishing breakfast or we're listening to a podcast or we're doing our journal guides or whatever, you know, you're going on your walk or you have your new gym routine. Uh, that's another thing that I've created is a new workout uh, routine when it comes to like the weight, starting a new show. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is actually when I'm recording this is live the first episode. So I need to watch that. So just getting excited when it comes to your net routines and your morning routines, and that will build over time. And I would say the last thing when it comes to physical transitions would be thinking about your self-care practices. Is there anything that you want to add in or take out or just spend more time doing right now? I think honestly, my self-care is kind of working more on my mental health when it comes to doing therapy and making sure that I'm supporting my gut health. But 
I have been doing acupuncture, which is really beautiful. Traditional Chinese medicine is something that I'm interested in when it comes to the way that I take care of myself. So doing things like acupuncture and like eating warming foods and understanding that there's different seasons of life, which is not just a traditional Chinese medicine thing, but whatever, um, different herbs and supplements and things like that you can take for your body, but also like doing warm baths now. Oh my gosh, it is bath season or it's almost bath season. I need to get one of those like bath. What are they called? Like those table things where you can have like your drink on there. You can have your little iPad situation. I need one of those. I can't believe I don't have one of those, but I'm going to get one of those and I'm going to have like a little routine where I light my candle and I have my real housewives going like that to me like that's what I want to be doing in the fall time and in the winter time on my my Friday nights or my solo date nights like really spend time like romanticizing these things and enjoying these things I've been spending a lot of time when it comes to my scalp care and really focusing on growing my hair essentially and taking care of my hair and having those set days where I am deep conditioning I'm doing those oil treatments all of that I just think that why not because I feel like capitalizing on the time that we have because it does feel like time slows down a bit in the fall and winter and I think that has to do with just the fact that the sun sets even though it also feels like we have shorter amount of days because we do but I think that that it feels like that when it comes to being productive but it doesn't really feel like that when it comes to like other things that we can do throughout our days I hope that made sense and the last thing I'll quickly touch on would be productivity transitions and I kind of already talked about it when it comes to setting goals and having a vision for your life and working on these things. But I really want you to just think about this saying that I'm sure you've heard before. If you fail to plan, you can plan to fail. What does that mean? Not only does it mean you need to have some sort of plan for your life for the next season, if you want to feel like you're doing something and being successful or having more money or better relationships, anything, right? plan. You need to have a plan. What is the vision? What is the plan? But within this plan, I want you to focus on being realistic. Be realistic with your weeks and your schedules. Sometimes we can load up our schedules and we can have a hundred million goals that we want to hit and then we don't do any of it because we're just not being realistic. And you guys are smart enough to know what you can achieve and what is just way too much for no reason, okay? We're not talking about not having faith in ourselves to hit goals, but just focus on a few main things. One thing in your career or one thing when it comes to your health and just take your time and really take that action towards it and and become an embodiment of that thing and do that until it becomes a normalized thing, a, a part of your identity, a part of the way you live your life and then go on to the next thing. And this honestly comes back to just moving with the season of life. You don't need to accomplish a hundred million things all in this new season of your life. Pick something and take it slow, set actionable steps throughout your week but actually make sure that you're making a plan and execute that. And so what I like to do is every week, usually on a Sunday, sometimes on a Monday, but usually Sundays, sitting down with my planner and being like, what do I have for the next week? What do I want to do? What are the podcast episodes that I want to film? What are the things that I want to do when it comes to studying? Am I giving myself enough time to even hit all of these goals and do all of these things? And am I creating space for peace? Am I giving myself some time to breathe? We get so caught up sometimes in being productive and we want to hit goals and productivity and da 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 because it makes you feel so good about yourself and it makes you feel like you're going somewhere in your life. But a lot of the times we do that because we're so not comfortable with slowing it down. But that is something that I want to practice even more this season and something that I would like you guys or I would hope that you guys will focus on this season is practicing the art of slowing down, okay? You can still hit your goals, but be realistic, okay? Take it slow, have a plan, but just be present. And also be present so that you can be embodied. Because again, when we have a plan to hit certain goals or we wanna do a new thing, we wanna read a new book, sometimes we do that thing and then we're not even an embodied version of that because we, we did it so quickly, right? We read the book so quickly and now we don't even remember what we what we had in that book or we didn't talk about that topic or we didn't do the practice that was attached to the work that we learned or the podcast that we learned or the course that we learned. And also 
Thinking about how you can spend your time more wisely in this season of life will be huge. I am really like big on this right now. This probably has to do with age. This this definitely has to do with age. I'm approaching 29. I'm getting to the point where it's like, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time when it comes to things that don't really align with me when it comes to work. Um, I don't want to waste my time when it comes to scrolling and, and watching people's lives or like con- consuming content or beliefs that are, don't serve me. Don't want to do it. I don't want to waste time with people, whether that's romantic or even friendships, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really like recalibrating all of that as well and really thinking about where can I best spend my time and my energy. And sometimes that looks like taking a rest. Sometimes that looks like not rushing the process. My time, your time, it's precious. Remember that and get clear with how you want your life to be. Because if you don't, it will not only pass you by, but you'll just be burning yourself out because what you will continue to do is strive and try and hit and achieve goals and change your life because you're a human being. So since that's built in within you, and you're going to do that regardless, you might as well do it long-term. You might as well be smart with your time. You might as well do it the right way. You might as well, instead of trying to skip all of the understanding the content and getting right to the answer, dive into the content, listen to it, digest it, give yourself a moment to be embodied, and then you will find, you will become that person that's on your Pinterest board. You will become the person that's on your mood board, your vision board, your whatever, the person that you dream about every single day. And I'm living proof of that. I do that every single season of my life, essentially. So I am gonna be doing that again this season, and I'm gonna be right here with you guys. I am excited to see what podcast episodes that will be coming out of this new season of life. I am experiencing life, which means there's going to be new things that I can bring to you guys. In a few episodes to come, I I would actually like to touch on self-trust and self-esteem and self-image. So if any of those topics feel relevant to you or you're interested in, you can either leave on the Spotify like little comment section what you want to like kind of hear and any sort of like questions in regards to those topics and or on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment and let me know what you want because I feel like I get a lot of questions and I did recently get a question when it comes to self-trust and I really want to dive into it like deeply and I want you to really understand what it means to actually be somebody who deeply trusts themselves and look at your time and your energy and your body and your mind and your soul and your everything as precious. Okay, that is what I want you to focus on in this next chapter of your life. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.